Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we're honored to be with Beth English, keynote speaker and founder of Nashville Creative Group. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. So we get to talk about stand-up comedy, art, therapy, so much more. But let's start out. Give us a little bit of your personal backstory, because obviously this starts with you. Definitely. Well, I'm an artist. That's how I identify myself mostly, because I use creativity as a way to help people move through their most painful experiences in life. So whether that's through visual art or stand-up comedy, I take all of these pieces and then I merged them into a keynote. And so I love to share my story of overcoming childhood trauma and how I did it using the power of creating. And I just want to inspire people to believe that no matter where they are, that if they're stuck, that there is a way out. And I try to show them a way out so that they can go and live the life that they dream of. Absolutely. And so talk about you as an artist, because you've had a chance to have your artwork all over the place. And so talk about the different mediums and how you got into art. Well, I've always been creative as a child. I just loved creating, whether that was sewing or painting. I play music and sing. I mean, just I want to express myself. And so it doesn't surprise me that I'm on the keynote stage expressing myself through my story and in all the creative mediums that I use. But as far as art goes, I, I moved to Nashville in 2007 and I quickly became very involved in the art community, showing in galleries, getting projects with the Nashville transit system, painting murals and private and public spaces and having hotels purchase my work to go in their rooms all over downtown. And so it's just been a wonderful experience here being an artist in Nashville. And then I took that work and turned it into a performance on stage to tell people about the power of art, because it really is about the message and about how it makes you feel and how it ties to bigger ideas that it's important for us to contemplate in life. Yeah, I think there's so many cool storylines around art, using it for therapy, for healing, for expression, for connecting with community, building community. Mm -hmm. um, I think also, too, when you have a chance to bring people through and look through art, you you can ask them simply, what do you see and why do you see it? And you can bring all these different worlds together and learn more about each other. So there's a lot of power in art. What inspires you when you are sitting down to create art? Obviously, you know, expression is a big piece of that. What inspires you and how do you kind of manifest that on your end? Well, I love to express the feelings I have inside. And if I'm setting the intention to experience joy, to feel more happiness, then I'll meditate and visualize on those ideas. And then I will be open to allow myself to express it. So to me and through me is the way that I look at the way that I create. Because if that's an authentic expression, an extension of me, then someone will connect to that and they'll feel that somewhere in themselves. And then that creates a dialogue between the artist and the viewer. And that's exactly what I want to do because it's really about, well, how do we talk about joy? How do we talk about happiness? How do we talk about expression in a way that connects us and makes us curious about, well, how can we have that for ourselves? You mentioned the singing and the songwriting, kind of that piece of it. How did you get into stand-up comedy? I heard a voice. A voice from above that said, do stand-up comedy. And I didn't listen for a long time, but it just would not stop nagging at me. And, and I typically do see visions for the artwork that I create. And so it wasn't uncommon for me to feel led intuitively or spiritually into an artistic medium. And so that's exactly what I did. I took a stand-up comedy class here in Nashville at Third Coast Comedy Club. And from there, I started going to open mics and doing shows. And it just became my most favorite medium because it is so challenging. It is so expressive and the community is wonderful. And so I am such a huge advocate for it. And I think if there's a chance for anyone to go out and experience joy through artistic mediums, then go see a comedy show. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, you know, there, there's a, a, so much art form to it in terms of the comedic timing and obviously the writing and, you know, the connecting with the audience. There's so much into it when it comes to uh, being a stand-up comedian. But let's switch over and talk about Nashville Creative Group. Talk about establishing that organization. Well, being part of the art community was really important to me. I had built this vast network of artists and writers, and I wanted to bring that all together. And so that's what I did in 2012, founded the Nashville Creative Groups. So that was over 10 years ago. And now we have nearly 10,000 artists in Middle Tennessee connected, and we're able to share resources, share our work and stories, and be able to help one another when we need it. And so that is something I'm so proud of. I've hosted well over a hundred events for free for this community as a way to create an environment for artists to succeed. And it has been such a joy to be a part of the art community in that way, because not only am I the founder, but I am a member and I want to exist in in this community, just like everyone else and be able to meet their needs if I can, or share contacts it's just a way for artists to be able to have a little bit of extra help that we need to be able to succeed at our craft. Yeah. What's been the feedback from some of the other artists and the friendships and such that you've been able to form? I've had people move to Nashville to be part of this community. That's probably the most mind blowing feedback that I've had because they've seen it online. They've wanted to be a part of it. They're, they're, they're hungry for an artistic community that they can be a part of, and they found it here because this is such a special environment and, and city for creativity that people are drawn to the city, but sometimes there's not an easy way into the whole art scene. And so this is sort of like a come here when you move here, become a part of it, learn where you need to go and insert yourself in your energy. And then it's just like a, a way for the artists coming to Middle Tennessee to learn how to be a part of the art scene and learn how they can give back if they have resources that they can share as well. So it's for art enthusiasts, it's for artists, creatives, who anyone who identifies as creative, people who want to feel more creative, they're all part of it. And it's such a great community. How does one become a member? You just join. So it's a Facebook group and we have a button, you know, join the group and then boom, you're instantly in. <laughs> Makes it easy. And you mentioned, obviously, events and the friendships and those relationships form. You mentioned the give back component. Give us a little bit more in terms of the, the structure and the vision for it in terms of all the different ways that the community can plug in, you know, taking that Facebook group and making it obviously live. Well, there's lots of other organizations here who support the arts. So we like to partner with them to bring the work that they're doing so that we're not recreating the wheel every time. If the Arts and Business Council has an event that would benefit the, the artists in the community, let's share it. If the Metro Arts Commission has an event or a call for artists, let's share it. So it's a way of plugging in information from all over the city into one place. And then as far as the events go, we've hosted um, events where people can come and show their art. So like an artist open mic, you come and you show your work, you talk about it, you're able to connect with other artists, ask questions about mediums or how to get it in a gallery. And so there's a lot of personal and professional development involved in the framework of the community because artists, number one thing they struggle with is fear. That's what I've learned over leading this group. And it's not just artists, everyone struggles with fear. And so I like to speak to that and I like to help people feel like they can unblock themselves out of that fear and start doing the things they really want to do. And once they do that, they realize that they can do anything. And so that's really the hope that I have for the community here is that if we're creating, then we're doing something right. We Very just got to cool. keep creating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it goes back to your point when you talk about like all the uh, the fears like public speaking is the number one fear. And so like you're talking about you know, putting yourself out there and, you know, even uh, for you as a keynote, like so many people just are afraid of public speaking. And so taking that expression, opening yourself up and learning that art form. And yet the power of it is transformational. What advice would you give for aspiring artists? But, you know, when you look at the business of being an artist, give us a couple of your top tips or recommendations when it comes to making it a true business. Wow. There's so much I could say about this, but I would say if I'm speaking directly to artists, don't create the work that you think you can market out there 
in the industry. Create the work that is unique to you and unique to your own vision. That is the most important thing you can do. And I know that is the scariest place to be because it is so vulnerable to be able to share that part of yourself. It's it's a lot easier to create something that maybe you saw somewhere else and maybe it was accepted somewhere else. And so you feel that security in that, but no, create the unique visions that you have and use your unique talents to get your craft out into the world, because that is what people want and need. They don't want to see the same thing over and over. They want to see what you uniquely have to say to the world. Yeah. The authentic expression. I agree a hundred percent. And you see that, I mean, whether it's influencers, whether it's, you know, the speakers, those who are authentic, who stand out, who share their personal story, um, you know, have a chance to really be successful and to make a real impact. And I think at the end of the day, that's what it's about is making an impact. Talk about for you and your keynote addresses, talk about your topics, talk about, you know, the different audiences, go ahead and dive in deeper on that side. Well, mostly I speak to leaders because leadership development is so important because if I can train leaders, then they can go and train the people that they need to. And then we're just getting the message out there more quickly. And so I mostly work with corporate groups doing leadership development. And I talk about creativity, how I define it, how we can connect to it. I share my story. I give lots of examples and learning takeaways, like how to find your voice, how to use your vision to take action and how to do this, even in a world where we feel anxiety and stress and depression, how to overcome all of these emotions that may feel like they're stopping us from moving forward. And so it's very exciting. I talk about art. I do stand up. I play guitar and sing original music. And so it really is just like all of my art experiences into like a, a 60 minute performance. So going back, you mentioned how you define creativity. How do you define creativity? We are all creative. Every single one of us, we were born that way and we're creative today. And if we don't believe it, it's because the world has slowly convinced us that we're not. Sometimes we lean on old stories from our past that make us feel like we don't have it within us. But the truth is we do. It's just waiting for us to channel it. When you look at some of the important takeaways, especially for the corporate groups, like you're talking about, because mm -hmm. the beauty of this is, you know, you start sharing it and all of a sudden, you know, you've got corporate groups all over from Nashville, Memphis, and literally around the world. What are some of the important takeaways that you like to make sure that they're experiencing and that they're taking back to their teams and their companies? We have to approach one another with humanity, that all of our experiences, whether they're from our childhood or from yesterday, we bring them with us everywhere we go. And so we need to be sensitive to that. We need to make people feel safe and secure in their workplaces so that if they do need to speak to someone about something they're going through or they're struggling with their performance, then we need to be able to support them. And if you're an individual going through that yourself, the most important thing you can do just to begin is connect with the breath. Because if we're in constant stress or fight or flight, then we're never going to be the type of person that we want to be or have the type of results at our job that we want to see. So connecting to your breath, so breathing, and then taking care of ourselves, expressing ourselves, asking for help, talking about what we're going through. Don't keep it bottled up inside. Feel free to express express what's going on within you. And if, if that feels safe to do that alone, well then do that alone. But if it feels safe to do that in a group, do it in a group. This is why I host workshops to help people learn through the creative process about how they can build resilience and become unstuck. Because if they're stuck making a piece of art and they can get out of that unstuckness in that moment, then they can apply that to other things in their life and realize, oh, there are a lot more options out there than I realize. I'm a lot more resilient than I think. Even though when I feel fear, if I just keep going, it'll be all right. These are some of the things that they're learning through the process of creating art. What's been one of your favorite experiences so far? And it can be on the speaking side. It can be the art side. But what's been a favorite moment so far for you? I love coming off the keynote stage and getting into the the group, usually after some type of reception and having people share their personal stories with me, because if you're vulnerable, other people are going to feel safe to be vulnerable too. And that's when they start to have a breakthrough is when they realize that they don't have to be afraid or in shame anymore, that they can open up and express themselves and share what they've been through and realize that there's hope on the other side of all that struggle. I just love to impact people and realize that because of the stories I've shared with them, that they have been able to set themselves free 
I think what's cool is for you as a public speaker, when you share your story, it then gives others in the audience the permission and the power to share theirs. And just like you're talking about then, all of a sudden, then everything opens up and all these new opportunities become available once they start sharing and connecting. And so carry that forward into how can we connect with you? And so how can we carry these conversations forward? Website, social media, where do we go to connect in and learn more? Well, first off, I would love to connect with those of you who are watching. So if you're on social media, check me out on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. My website is bethenglish.com and that's B-E-T-H-I-N-G-L-I-S-H. My email is on my website. So feel free to reach out to me. I would love to hear how this interview has inspired you and how maybe I can come into your workplace or help the people that you are leading in your community to be more creative, to be more open, to start to see options and possibilities all around you, using your imagination to reach your potential. Good stuff. Well, Beth, greatly appreciate all you're doing to power the good. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you.